Hello everyone, my name is Peter and I have just taken a giant nap. I do have some questions to ask you about this and this video is sponsored by Squarespace. First question, how would you describe your napping technique? Personally, uh, I'm kind of, I go at it initially pretty aggressive, but I ease off pretty quick. Are you left or right sided? Or maybe front or back? Describe your ideal napping stance. Uh, I kind of do this army crawl stance, um, but on my back, kind of like one of these. Like if you flip me over onto my stomach, I could start going like this, armor crawling. Um, also maybe a stance that I would do if I was trying to shimmy between two walls that were really close to each other. And finally, what is the ideal nap length? Uh, I put down 30 minutes. That's usually what I set my timer for. Anyways, this is important research information I'm trying to gather here. More importantly, here we have... Uh, in a recent video, I was reading the comments and someone recommended that I buy and look at and try out and review and say what I think about and test this pen. There's not a lot here for how big this was. Typical Amazon. Um, there's a warning outside of this bag that says not to use this bag in cribs, beds, carriages, or play pens. I don't know what you would use it for. All right, this is the Zebra TS3, which I bought for $5.66. It's a miniature mechanical pencil, five mil point five millimeter lead. And as you can see, it really is uh, very small. You can easily hide it right there in the palm of your hand, you know, if you're into hiding things in the palm of your hand. Uh, I like the little Japanese label here. It's a nice touch. You zoom in a little bit. TS3. And then here on the clip, it says Zebra. No, it says Zebra Japan. Yeah. I don't know if any of this comes... Oh, it does unscrew. That's very satisfying. And there it looks like almost like a little hypodermic needle or something. Very cool. I have a little metal cone here. Nice. But I have one thing. Oh, and there's a little eraser. Perfect. A lot of people really like that. Um, I do have one thing hanging in the back of my head, though. Still bugging me. It's all this wasteful packaging, and I think it is my duty to, uh, what's that word? It's not reduce, reuse, recycle, it's upcycle. I feel like that was a very popular word in like 2016. And I think it would be perfect, I'll do this quickly, but I think it could be perfect to make into uh, a glove of some sort. Yeah. That's just what I'm envisioning. Okay, wait, wait, so here's the pattern. Wait, let me draw the pattern out so I don't cut around my hand. Do I have a Sharpie? Gonna need to leave some room for stitching, right? I feel like anyone who's ever sewed a glove before is like, Peter, you're making a lot of terrible mistakes right now, which you're gonna realize later. What? Making mistakes is my favorite way to learn. Or making mistakes and then convincing myself I had different goals all along so they weren't really mistakes in the first place. Reframing things. Now I feel like since it's thicker around here, I should pop this line out even further like that. All right, and then we Got to cut through both layers. Is it cutting through both layers? It is. All right, good. Cut through both layers.
All right, excellent. We have our two pieces ready to give this overpackaging a second life. Uh, you're welcome, Jeff. <laughs> if you won't do it, I will. Then we take our handy dandy sewing kit. There should be something useful in here. Let's get a needle. I don't know why there's so many different lengths of needles, but I'll just get like a kind of a medium length one. And uh, the thimble, of course, this is uh, important. I think maybe it goes on like this finger. And uh, might need these little scissor things. Might need, I uh, won't need the measuring tape. Not really in a measuring mood. And we're gonna sew it with the white thread, of course. No, no. We're gonna use the blue thread because there's already some blue here. I wish it was a lighter blue, but this'll, this blue will do. And then we just need like a ton of it, I think. Wait, wait, wait. Not too much though, because we'll have to like pull it through every time. And then the exciting part where we effortlessly thread the needle. I feel like they made this needle hole comically small. But I did it against all odds. And then we just kind of go through here and uh, I'm just, I just wanted enough, enough straight pins in there to uh, keep it all from flailing around while I'm working on it, right? All right, so I've just fast forwarded about 17 hours and I've made some progress here. You can see up around the thumb and it's about time I tie this off and uh, get another piece of string. I wonder if there's, there's got to be like a bunch of easy tips and tricks and techniques and stuff for like tying stuff off. I'm trying to make one up on my own right now, but I'm not sure if it's really working. All right, so here it is completed. Uh, it ain't pretty, but it is beautiful. Let's try it on. See if all the seams rip or not. I can already tell you it's a little bit snug here. I might have to get some Vaseline. Oh, things are popping. It's already getting very warm in here, I'll tell you that much. Oh yeah. All right, look at that. It's on there. <laughs> I can I confess. I hopefully if I if Does anyone else hear beeping outside? <laughs> look at that. It's on there. It's toasty, it's warm, it's snug, but I can move my fingers individually. And look, can I confess something? I, hopefully if I know what I'm doing, I have edited out most of the process I went through building this. There were several points at which I was very close to giving up. Uh, and I thought this is such a waste of time. At most of these points where I switched from, you know, like uh, blue to yellow to green thread and I, was trying to thread the needle for so long so many times it was crazy but i made it and here at the end i still do believe yeah, that was such a waste of time and that's coming from a guy who does a lot of things that really are when you think about it really borderline waste of time You're like what really is drawing good for who knows all right here's the true test if i can pick up the tiny pencil with my gloved hand. I can. Look. Oh. 
Look at that. All right, check that out. I've got a pretty firm grip on it. Uh, this glove actually looks pretty cool. I like the stitching around here. It's kind of uh, dystopian or something a little bit like. You know, I was just thinking, I could have used some help with this, but if you make a website with Squarespace uh, and you ever have any questions about how something works or how to do something, maybe you need to know how to do the website building equivalent of stitching or threading a needle, and you have a question about that, they have 24-7 email tech support, and they usually get back to you in about an hour and they don't ship this service off to someone else. These are employees in their offices answering your questions so they know what they're doing, they know what they're talking about, and I have had them. Uh, I found them to be really helpful on the one or two occasions I've had to ask them a question. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash peterdraws for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, I think I've had an, this is like a, more than a glove, this is a, a sauna. Uh, probably going to go wash my hand just because I got so sweaty in there and it's uh, really gross. Uh, that was weird that I was using my hands to make something for my hands. That's like when C-3PO sees the factory of the robots making other robots. All right, of course, this is a pen or a pencil review in this case. And for this next part, you're going to need your safety glasses. I do really think these need to start coming back because, first of all, they look great. They're fun to wear. They're comfy. And they are safe. I even wore these to bed last night and woke up with them still on. Notice I still have both my eyes, so no making fun of me. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our pencil here. I'm going to pop the back of it off. And what we basically want to do is test uh, how, like, how pencil-y, how straight it is. I'm going to pop this out of here. I'm going to put the pencil in here, choke up on it, and uh, if everything goes right, when we spin it really fast, it shouldn't wobble around at all. That's basically what I want to find out. All right, are you ready? Uh, it seems to work pretty good, huh? I'll cover up this light with my finger. Hmm. That seems like precision machining. Check it out from the side. Weirdly enough, it did seem like there was a slight wobble there. Oh, it's coming loose. Nice. All right. I now feel confident uh, to draw with this. I should try drawing with it while it's in the in the drill. All right. Is everyone ready? It's hard to hold it. It's definitely an interesting sensation. Uh, kind of a scary line effect there. All right, well, we can do normal drawing now. I do want to say I kind of want to find my 
like a I don't know I never have felt totally comfortable drawing with pencil I always get kind of sketchy or like I I feel a lot more comfortable with pen obviously and I would like to get that comfortable with pencil so hopefully I can kind of ease into a style that I enjoy and I feel confident with. That's what I want. I want some confidence. Give it to me. So I pulled out the Muji pad of paper with the, well, they're like little thumbnail sized rectangles and decided to draw on this because as I stated, I am not completely confident in my pencil sketching skills, pencil drawing skills, and I'm in search of that confidence. And I thought a lot of little drawings is better than getting discouraged on starting on one drawing, uh, you know, that I don't feel as great about. That's a good way to get discouraged, and I don't want discouragement. So I, well, I, I foiled myself by taking these little squares, and on the first page, I did about five pages. So what is that? Four times five, 20 of these squares in this drawing video. I started taking way too long on the first four squares. I was just being very, very careful, right? Very gentle with it. I was putting so much detail into these little shadings and gradients and stuff. Because look, I had little squares, I had a little pencil, and in my mind that automatically, you know, uh, meant that I should be, you know, be making little details and just be being very careful. But no, thankfully, uh, by the time the second, you know, pages two through five rolled around, I realized, no, I need to loosen up, right? Get sketchy, which is something I, I tell myself a lot. And by the time I do get sketchy, I end up enjoying it a lot, thankfully. So that did happen. And somewhere along the way, someone told me that these uh, little square th thumbnail sheets are intended for making some sort of uh, manga or some sort of Japanese sequential art. So I even did that with one of the sheets, kind of doodled some little uh, comic panels. <clears throat> I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what happened with it, but then for the last three sheets it was, I think I was just kind of sketching and scribbling tones and values and textures. And, uh, I had a great time with it. It was all right. For some reason with this tiny, thin, short pencil, I experienced no hand discomfort. It was fine. Now, I was using the Kawiko SketchUp earlier, and it's about the same length, but it's heavier and it's thicker, and I was experiencing some hand discomfort with that, and I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because with that thing having much thicker lead uh, and being heavier and sturdier, I felt like I could grip it harder and press harder, and so maybe with this one, I just was being a lot more gentle and not squeezing, right? Because I have heard from a lot of people, um, people saying like, Peter, Peter, my hand gets tired, my, I don't know, like I'm squeezing the pencil too hard, and it really is important to not uh, squeeze too hard and tire your hand out too much. Also, it could have had been having something to do with the, the great number of breaks I was taking. I was taking tons of breaks, even in the middle of each one of these little drawings, but just the fact that I was doing several smaller, you know, many different little drawings instead of one big drawing that helped me, it forced me to take breaks. I mean, it didn't force me to. A couple of times I just jumped smoothly with, you know, like one smooth transition from one drawing to the next, but it was good. And, uh, I don't know, I liked it. I like these little thumbnails. I'm pretty sure I wore my safety glasses the whole time. I think in the future here, I will do a review video for you with some um, different safety glasses. I'll just grab a few random different safety glasses for you because I want you to have a good, um, idea of the different options out there for you. Safety glasses wise. All right. I want you to be informed. I want you to be educated and knowledgeable and just know what, yeah, know, know what's out there and what I think about it. Because if you know what's out there and you know what I think about it, Hey, that's half the battle at least. After that, the other half of the battle is uh, I don't know, strategizing, building an army, and then actually fighting the battle. But if you don't have safety glasses, whew. oh, I watched that movie, uh, speaking of battles, I watched that movie 1917. Whew. That was a good movie. Maybe one of my favorite movies I've seen in a long time. It was just intense. I even had dreams 
look, I had this dream after that movie, and I can tell you this dream because the dream doesn't actually have anything to do with the movie. I think it was just kind of like my mind was just kind of still going about the movie because of the movie. My mind was kind of high strung because of it, I'm saying. I dreamed I was running down a hill. It's a specific hill in my memory, which I won't tell you about or describe because I don't think any of you really know about it, but it's a specific hill from my memory. I was running down it with two other people. Uh, one of them was this girl who I don't really, no one specific from my memory, but just this random person. And we were running down and then she, she like runs into like a wire with her face, like a, it's like a close, it was like a clothesline, but then it was like a, like there's like a metal, like a piano wire or something. And she like trips and falls. Uh, actually, I don't know if I want to tell you this, uh, this dream because it's kind of, actually it was more of a nightmare. Anyways, and then I was like, are you okay? I'm t- I, I want to share my dream because it, I don't normally remember my dreams, but also I don't want to give anyone else bad dreams. And then she got up and then she was like, yeah, I'm fine. And I'm like, are you sure? And then she's like, yeah. Is she's, she, and she's like touching her eye and she's like, is it okay? And then I'm like looking at her eye. I'm like, yeah, I think it's okay. Like nothing immediately looked wrong with her eye. Then I look close, more closely at her eye and then like in, in the white part of her eye next to her iris. Wait, which part of her eye is the iris? Which part is the pupil? Well, in the white part of it next to it, I could kind of see there was like a tiny cut. Maybe where the wire had hit it. Mind you, this is all a dream. I was still asleep for all of this. None of this happened in real life, okay? And then I was like, yeah, I, th- I mean, there might be a tiny cut. She's like, it's okay, we gotta go, because there, there was some urgency. We we're in a rush, right? Uh, but then some, something, something happened in the dream. I ended up looking at her eye more, and it turned out that... It, have you ever seen those um, devices you can use on an Apple that cuts the apple in a perfect spiral. Like it cores the apple and cuts the apple in a spiral. I shouldn't have told this dream. Anyways, it turned out that her eye had something like that happen to it. I guess just by running into that wire. Oh no. I feel bad for sharing this dream. I know young children watch this channel sometimes. Everything was fine. We put a band-aid on it and everyone was okay. And we went and we went to McDonald's. We went to the play place. And uh we had a Mc, we had a had a, a McNuggets. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, everyone. Thanks for watching. Um my name is uh I've been Peter. You've been the viewers. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you think of any other tests I should do on pens in the future. You know, we did the power drill test here. Uh, We did the test to see if I could, um, I guess building a glove out of the packaging was mildly a test. But, all right, see you on the other side, everyone. Goodbye.